Good morning. I look rough. Um, and this is not an aesthetic start to the vlog, video, whatever, but um, as you can tell by the title, I'm not feeling the greatest. Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm 22 years old. I have endometriosis and PCOS. I was diagnosed. Uh, it's probably been like three or four years, but I've been struggling with it since fifth grade. Um, I am also currently in the middle of getting diagnosed with um, POTS, Ehlers-Danlos, Ehlers-Danlos, um, fibromyalgia. That's like the potential group right now. So um, there are some things that I'm going to do that don't really have to, or don't really pertain to endometriosis, but yeah, it is just one of those days. Normally flare up lasts more than a day, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna take you along, show you what I do to try and survive. I am in a, I'm in an insane amount of pain that like comes and goes. Like sitting here right now, I'm in a lot of pain. Um, I also, I mean all night I was like waking up with that pain, but um, so I didn't sleep well. Insane amount of pain, but then on top of that, I also um, was having the worst night sweats, which normally is like a POTS issue, but when you have one, it kind of, and one is flaring up, it will kind of flare up the other one. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be dealing with right now. And I also spent last night, and like all of this will be TMI, but for people that have endometriosis or know someone with endometriosis, I, f I feel like um, it's a little bit easier to benefit from this. So last night I was just like gagging and retching and dry heaving. Um, I was basically like as close to puking as you can be without actually vomiting, which is terrible for me because I have the worst fear of vomiting or like being around other people who vomit. It's like a huge phobia of mine and always has been. I've never not freaked out about throwing up. Um, so yeah, I was just in so much pain and so nauseous that that is like all my body could do was just retch. So, I did that until I didn't have a voice for a little while. And yeah, that is just the reality of this type of chronic illness. Um, and if you are suffering from, from it, I am thinking of you. If you are not suffering from it, but know someone that is, uh, I just really wanna thank you for clicking on this video because I know that um, it means a lot to us to have the people in our lives that maybe don't understand, um, attempt to understand or, uh, make that kind of effort. So, I don't even really know if this was an intro <laughs> or what it was. Please apply blood onto the test strip. So then I do that. I'm pretty sure, I don't know like too much about it, they just want me to see if my blood sugar is correlating with some of my like blood pressure issues because of POTS. Um, so with that being said, when you first wake up, this is like my fasting blood sugar. Normally you should be 100 or under. I'm at 118. I don't, that's not really crazy. But I think it's within that like pre-diabetic realm. I don't know if that's because of PCOS. I don't know. All I know is that I check in, in the mornings. I'm pretty consistently over 100. So if you are someone that deals with POTS, not that I am a doctor or anything, but I would say um, it might be beneficial to check your blood sugar because I have sometimes where my blood, my blood sugar is low and then my blood pressure like skyrockets. 
it doesn't happen very often. That's definitely not like the cause of my blood pressure issues, but there are times where there is like a correlation. My pain has subsided this second, but then I'm gonna get up and walk to get breakfast and it's gonna come back. I've taken a nap, I've ate, um, I think the pain has gotten worse, honestly, and like bleeding has gotten worse and all that fun stuff. So, hey, you're stealing the spotlight, man. I'm gonna take a hot bath because I just need one. Um, and probably read in there or watch something or whatever because I just don't feel good. But I also just wanna get out of these clothes. Jerry just sent me something today that was like, train your girlfriend on when she switches from her nighttime pajamas to her daytime pajamas or something and that's accurate. <laughs> That is what's happening right now. So I'm gonna get that done. Just relax. Heat is really the only thing that helps me. Even if I take like Tylenol or something, it doesn't really do much for me. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna fill um, a water bottle cause I like my baths pretty hot to help with pain. The only thing that's hard with that is it's kind of a trade off because it like triggers the dysautonomia symptoms, the pot symptoms but it eases the endometriosis symptoms. So I'd honestly rather be um, dizzy than in pain. <laughs> so like sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and that's where we're at. I have so many things that I wanna get done, but I just can't. Like I need to be resting and uh, that is so hard for me because I just, when I'm sitting and I'm resting, I'm thinking about all the things that need to get done. So yeah, I was supposed to have POTS rehab today too, which is like I go to the hospital three times a week and I basically work out, but I'm like monitored and they work my way up because they're trying to like retrain my mind and my heart to know how hard my heart is supposed to be beating when. Um, What are you doing? I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that today. Um, I, even when I was taking a nap, I was waking up and like writhing in pain. So, like I said, it just comes and goes. It's actually a little more consistent right now. Can you not? She just wants all the attention. It's actually cause I'm giving attention to the camera, so. And I was too lazy to put my tripod up, so she's um, wanting to get into the cabinet that you guys are. You're like on a shelf in the cabinet. Okay, I have, my face is breaking out. Sorry, it might be kind of loud. I have the water going, but I wanted to show you what I put in the tub, because it's definitely helpful. This is just the Dollar General brand. I try to find more like Meyer or like Dr. Teal sometimes, but this is it. It's just um, Epsom salt and it kind of helps. So yeah, I also just set up my Libby app, which I didn't even, I'd heard of it, but I never done anything with it. So now my libraries are linked to um, this app so I can get eBooks. So I'm probably gonna read an eBook or I've got a physical book. I'm trying to finish but I just like bring my physical books to school when I go to work um for like prep time or if the kids are reading or anything so yes but I'm gonna get in the tub hello it is day two of this wonderful flare-up uh, I'm doing a little bit better today I'm still in pain um, but I feel a little bit more like I, like I feel less inflamed in my face and I don't feel as nauseous but that stuff kind of like comes and goes um so yeah I can talk a little bit more today <laughs> the first thing I wanted to do uh because I just briefly went over symptoms it's also like late in the day it's um 3 30 sorry if you can hear Fletcher eating his toy right now playing with his toy but um I left off yesterday, I think, um, with after I took a bath. So I drew my bath and 
I sat in there for probably two hours. I definitely sat in there until the water got cold and I just read, um, which was nice. It, the heat, obviously, like I said, helps. And then it's also nice because I reading just allows me to de-stress. And so I just felt a little bit better going into the evening. Um, but I was still definitely still struggling and I had my fair share of pain in the bathtub too but I think the heat because it allows your muscles to relax a little bit better that has been or that was helpful uh, I will also say too that I and this is TMI like my endo videos are always gonna be pretty TMI because there are other people going through it and I you know want them to feel less alone and it's very common for your period to be kind of the biggest trigger of um pain and symptoms with endometriosis so with that being said i haven't had a period for three and a half years maybe four i want to say like three and a half years so when I do have a flare up and I do bleed, um, my body, like, I just don't know what to do. Like, I feel like I'm in middle school again and I'm getting my first period and I'm bleeding through every period and like, that's how I feel. With flare ups and even with two endosurgeries, I still bleed really heavy. Um, I also don't know if I had mentioned this earlier, but they suspect adenomyosis as well. Um, so that could also kind of be playing into it. So the reason I came on was because, oh, did you want more love? Sorry. I moved my hand away. I'll see if he does it. Kitty. I moved my hand away and he put his head back. He's not interested anymore. Um, is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, I believe. Po Poston. Um, it was so good. It, it was like... I don't even want to just say that it was a good fall read because I really think you could read this one whenever even though it kind of has to do with um, ghosts and all of that. So this main character sees ghosts and her parents own a funeral home. And she is also an author. So that's a whole mix of everything. She's trying to work on her last story for her contract and she goes back home and... Um, she doesn't really love to be in her hometown because when she was 13 she solved a murder and told the news outlets that it was because she talked to ghosts because she was so young so she just didn't really think that thank you people would well people would like perceive it in any way other than for what it was um or you know wouldn't think that it was weird but obviously they did so um, she goes home and did you want to be part of this too? And she loves when this camera's out. She always comes up. Sweet thing. You want to come say hi? You want to come say hi? Chill. Anyways, so um yeah it takes you through her writing the last story and um you get to meet a couple ghosts she is kind of struggling with this concept of the fact that love is dead and she only writes love stories romances so yeah anyways it was just really good and it was a book that i didn't want to end like i would read a million more books with the characters that were in this book because i just loved them and connected with them and um because she sees ghosts i'll say this can get a little emotional because she sees ghosts um the concept of death is pretty heavy in this book or like there's a lot of it it's not necessarily heavy um but for me experiencing loss in the way that i have and losing someone that I just adored and was very close to and uh, it has been a very hard loss for me. I will say that that definitely made this book bring up some emotions. Nothing bad, like again, I would read it again. There were just so many moments in this book that I 
loved there were so many quotes in this book like i i might read it again and go through and just tab quotes because there were just so many spots in this book where i was like the way that this is written is beautiful and i uh definitely want to check out more from this author so i will be doing that um yeah i just i can't say enough good things about it i i really really liked it um yeah so that is why i got back on here um so yeah i have a friend that is coming to bring me food today she messaged and asked she was gonna she's coming through my town um she's gonna come like past my house for her to go home so she just offered to bring me something i also will say i think i'm feeling a little bit better because i slept in like I definitely got more sleep last night than I did the night before and I'm hoping that it's like gradually continues in that direction. I'm going to call my doctor's office about getting off of it and just not. Um, can you tell that they're siblings? <laughs> can you tell that they're from the same litter? Um, just not having. Um, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Just not having, oh, okay. Those chemicals run through my body. Uh, yeah. And then I would just take the trade off. If I'm still gonna be in pain, I'm still gonna be in pain. But I'm also curious too, to see how my buddy, my buddy, to see how my body does, not on birth control, if I'm not bleeding anymore, or no. If I've, or if I've had those two endo surgeries, so not sure. We will see, and I will keep you posted on what I decide to do. But anyways, I'm gonna go because my friend is probably gonna be here soon with food, so. <laughs>